Welcome to episode 6 from chapter 7. And in this episode, we're just going to keep rolling along on our study of organelles, but we're going to focus on three organelles in particular. And they're all related to each other, so that's why they fit in this episode. We have the Golgi. We're going to talk about one of the things that the Golgi makes, which is a lysosome. And then we're going to talk about vacuoles. Right? The Golgi is part of what we learned about in our last episode, the endomembrane system. So I'm going to write down endomembrane system. And the endomembrane system has three parts, smooth ER, rough ER, and the Golgi. So essentially this picture right here is showing you how the endomembrane system works. Materials that are made by both ERs are shipped into transport vesicles. They're delivered to the Golgi, which we're going to learn about here in just a second. And then the Golgi is going to repackage them into new vesicles. And they're going to be you know, used to ship the stuff out of the cell. Now, the Golgi is named after an Italian scientist named Camille Golgi, who, who discovered it. And it's basically a stack of membranes that do these things. So if you want to write down in your notes functions, they're right here. Modify, sort, and repackage. And I like to remember it this way. Modify, package, and ship. Pretty much the same thing. So modify, package, and ship. MPS. Uh, it's going to take these materials. It's going to rearrange them, repackage them into a vesicle, and ship them out. All right? So we went over this before, but the Golgi's are really, really important organelle. So make sure that you know this slide very, very well. All right, let's get rid of that. We'll talk about lysosomes. Lysosomes are made by the Golgi, and what they do is they contain digestive enzymes. So if you can remember from a previous chapter that, uh, let's try a different color. There we go. That lice means to break. These have strong digestive enzymes. They're going to break down things. So they have two functions. They're going to break down biomolecules, so think of food, and they're also going to destroy worn-out organelles. So focus over here on this picture. We have some food particles that are being brought into the cell, and they're going to be packaged in what is called a, few, a food vacuole. So think of a big membrane bubble that's got a piece of food in it. This lysosome, which was made by the Golgi, and we see our stack of pancakes right here, this lysosome is going to fuse with the food vacuole, and its contents are going to be dumped in on top of the food. The food is going to begin to digest, and nutrients are going to be used by the cell to make whatever, and then finally any waste are going to get rid of. All right, so it's eliminated its waste. So think of a lysosome as like a cell's stomach. It's going to break down food. But I don't want to discount how important it is to break down worn or organelles because when you do that, you get, whoops, get back on here. You get to recycle the parts. So if we have a mitochondria that's broken down, it's worn out, doesn't work any, anymore, um, a lysosome will fuse with the mitochondria, the parts will be digested, and then the basic biomolecules that make it up are going to be recycled to make something different. So that's what a lysosome does. So remember, don't forget to study this. And that sounds like a really good quiz question there also. Finally for this one are vacuoles. Vacuoles are basically just like a vesicle, except they're bigger. Just a bigger box that you put stuff in. All right. So remember, bigger than vesicles. Now plants are rather unique. They have what is called a large central vacuole. And that's going to be over here. So this would be a large central vacuole, LCV. And it's going to contain water. Uh, it's going to do two things. The water is required for photosynthesis. But when that vacuole is full of water, it's going to push up against the cell wall. And that's what makes a plant cell stand up nice and stiff. All right, now, freshwater creatures like paramecia, paramecia is a one-celled structure that lives in pond water. Um, they have a problem. They have water that's always flowing in. So think of like a boat. So any of you that own a boat, I don't care how good a boat is, water always gets into it. So unless you want that boat to sink, you need to pump that water out. So every boat is going to have what is called a bilge pump because it needs to pump the water out. Well, paramecia have a bilge pump. It's called a contractile vacuole. As water moves in, it needs to be pumped out. So as you can see here, 
in this picture and over here in this one is that you've got the water coming in and then you have a vacuole that is squeezing. So contracting means to squeeze and it's squeezing out the water because if this water keeps moving in, all of a sudden that paramecium is going to go pop and it's going to burst. All right. So remember, vacuoles are bigger than vesicles. They're typically used to store bulk materials such as water, but special cases, the contractile vacuoles are used to squeeze it out. All right. That's going to end this short episode. We're just plodding along through our list of organelles that we need to know. So until the next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.